Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners. In this box right here, headed to the bench, is a Nixon Tacto. So stay tuned. Thanks for joining me for another box to bench video. This one's a little bit different from all the ones I've done in the past. In those videos, the delivery person has brought the rifle to my house. In this case, I was able to go to Donnie FL who is a Nixon retailer. Nixon's brought into the US by PCP Kong. This gun came to me from Donnie FL for this review, which I'm doing in January in sunny Florida. I hope you enjoy the review and just give you a little heads up, there will be a part two. So for those of you who don't know anything about Nixon, it is a Turkish company. Um, the Tacto is a shorter folding stock rifle, um, should be really good as a truck gun, at least that's what we're going to try and find out today, minus the truck. Um, it comes in the box with the folding stock and an adjustable uh, butt pad. Um, let's, uh, let's get it out and... See what actually comes in the box. You do get a hard case. Um, I'm gonna say if you go with the iron sights. Um, call them iron sights, they're actually polymer. I would say they are based on a mag pullish design. Um, feel pretty decent. If you're going to go with these sights, um, you should be able to use the case. Um, if you're going to put an optic on it, I don't think the case quite has the height for it. Um, so, in the box, you get the, the open sight or iron sights or whatever you want to call them. Uh, you get a little bit of a uh, cleaning cloth kind of thing. Uh, PCP manual. This is the butt pad it comes with. Um, goes right onto the buffer tube because this is a buffer tube design. Um, you do have a tool-free cheek riser on here. Um, you get about an inch of adjustment, uh, plus the forward and back adjustment. It does have a rubber butt pad and a little bit of an angle to the foot, which I like. Um, apparently, it's a, a big, big hit with the cranes uh, that are around here. Um, so that's the butt pad. You also get uh, four magazines. And I'll talk about this a little bit later. These are pretty, well, I don't know if you can hear that, but they're really upset about something. Um, pretty, should be a pretty familiar design to most people, but if you've never seen one before, um, there's an arrow on there. You turn it all the way around, then you pop one pellet in skirt first that'll hold the cassette you turn it back over so you're looking through the uh, polycarbonate or plexiglass or whatever that is um, and then you rotate back dropping the rest of the pellets in um, head first so pretty easy and if i'm looking at this right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven looks like twelve uh, pellets in 22 caliber. The rifle I've got today is a 22 cal, um, and I think I said this before, but you get four magazines, which is, uh, that's kind of different. Um, yeah, I know sometimes you get two magazines and you start feeling special. Uh, four magazines is all right. Um, these do slot in. You're going to see that there's a, a slot on the back, and they also are uh, stabilized magnetically. Um, I've shot some of the earlier Nixon offerings 
um, that use this magazine system and it's it's a solid system you may not like having to load that first pellet skirt first but you can't fault the magazines in operation they do a good job um, I will show you once we get the gun out there is one other like it might catch you off if you uh, if you've never shot one of these before um, but it's a little counterintuitive as to how you put the magazine into the gun but we'll we'll talk about that um, you also get kind of a, a keychain and um, a foster fill connector in case you don't have one um, these guns are filled by foster fittings as opposed to needing a fill probe you get a little bit of uh, lube um, and then a couple of o-rings and a couple of allen keys so kind of a, a spare parts kit um, all right let's get the rifle out of the bag and take a look at some features all right starting at the back you have adjustable length of pull and folding now there is a little spring to that mechanism so without adding anything else you do get that staying where it's supposed to which is kind of nice not hard at all to uh, move that back into place uh, moving forward along this side you really don't see anything until you get up to the foster fitting so you don't need a fill probe for that um, and then we go to the front um, you have this long uh, picatinny this is a I can't I think it's an aluminum some sort of alloy um, shroud with this big pick rail on it um, and then you come to the knurled front cap now this um, this does actually add some tension to the barrel so you get some nice uh, rigidness or rigidity depending on which one you like and then it also does come with a thread protector um, keep in mind when you tighten and loosen this um, if you over tighten this front knob or use the front knob to tighten this back part uh, and you may have to get a, a vice grips or something out to get them to get them apart so watch out for that but if you're going to add a uh, moderator this is half by 20 unf so threaded for just about any moderator you might want to use uh, based on the length of the barrel my guess is something like a tatsu or a sumo might be a really good match for this but i uh, have to do more testing than i'll than i'll be able to put in today in order to get that data for you um, so I'll probably post something on instagram after i get a little more time with it um, if i flip it around to the other side you've got a safety and it is safe in the forward position fire in the back position it's got letters on there so pretty easy to see you do have um, an ar compatible grip so if you don't like this grip you can swap that out i do want to make uh, one mention on this if you're going to swap this out throw your allen key up there back that out but when you go to replace the grip you're not actually threading the grip into this action um, this lower if you will is a polymer and there's a bolt uh, I'm sorry a nut um, there's a nut sitting there and if you want to swap this out my strong advice is loosen this Allen pull this kind of like lower I'll call it um, off and then swap your grip um, because it'd be really frustrating if you're like why isn't it why isn't it mating why isn't it holding um, it's because that bolt has probably come out of it it's got a recess in there it's held in place um, but it'd be really easy for that to pop out and, and kind of be loose in there and you'd have a hard time catching that that bolt that is holding your grip on so if you don't like this um, this can be really easily removed and swapped out um, you do have an adjustable uh, trigger here 
I think in the manual they call it a four-way adjustable trigger. Um, I haven't dug into it a lot and I'm not going to for the purposes of today's review. Um, give you a little bit of a look. You've got side lever cocking. Um, there's no air in this right now, so this is a pure dry fire. Um, pretty short um, first stage up against a wall. And then she goes. So not a bad trigger at all. And I, and I like that it's uh, got an adjustable up and down and can't um, shoe on there uh, for, for what this is coming in at price point. Uh, that's a pretty decent trigger. Your side action or side lever, you got a little bit of a spring at the beginning, open, back, forward. Um, I would say reasonably smooth. Um, there's, no, there's no catching or anything like that. Um, and you can decock the rifle. This is obviously where the magazine's going to go. You've got air gauge right here. Keep in mind, this is unregulated. So you're going to want to take your rifle, figure out what's the acceptable shot curve, um, and make decisions on how high you fill it. It is a 200 bar fill. We're getting spoiled and a little used to 230 bar fill, 250 bar fill, 300 bar fill. Keep in mind, uh, the Tacto is a 200 bar fill with this bottle. Um, there's no valve in the bottle, so you could swap this out. You could put a carbon fiber bottle on here. You could put a higher, uh, longer bottle. You could put a higher pressure bottle on. Uh, but as it comes, 200 bar fill. Um, we'll get you some velocity numbers in just a minute. I did mention before I wanted to talk about the magazine, and before we charge her up and get to shooting, let's talk about that now. In order to put the magazine into the rifle, I mentioned that I would talk about this in a little more detail. Let's go ahead and do that now. Obviously, you have to pull the bolt back, and then the magazine itself feeds from the right side of the gun. Uh, I always, in my head, am like, no, I'm going to push it in from this side. Uh, it won't go that way. There's this little lip on the edge. Um, that kind of stops it from going too far. So take the magazine. You should be looking at the clear part so you can see how many shots are left. You get this lined up. Pull it all the way in. It's held in place magnetically, and then your bolt goes forward. Uh, this magazine's still empty, so I can't probe it forward. Um, I'm done shooting, ready to pop the magazine out. I push it from the back side. I can't pull it any farther fuller this way. So I pop it from this side. It comes out. And then I'm ready to take another one. Slide that in there. Make sure she's all the way seated. Bolt forward, no problems. So if you've, well, if you're like me, you can try and push it in from this side. It just won't go. You do have that nice guide in there there's a machine piece right in there you can see um, the the feeding on these magazines is really good um, i think one last thing to cover before we get to shooting is that you do have a transfer port adjustment um, you've got a little bit of range um, if there's one thing that i could say about the nixon line that like i wish um, were changed is I wish somehow they had engineered a, a couple of detents into there. Uh, because while I found that actually uh, all the guns that I've shot from the Nixon line, actually ha this transfer port is a meaningful adjustment. Um, and you can definitely do some fine tuning. The challenge is repeatability. Um, you know, you can move it to the bottom and that's pretty easy. And you can move it to the top and that's pretty easy. Um, but, you know, Finding a spot that's perfect just in between and, and keeping it there, um, it's kind of like if you bump it, it's going to be different. And, um, you know, if you had like a, a middle detent and then a top detent, it might be just a little bit easier to work with. But I would say that's a, a pretty small, small thing. And my guess is most people are going to want to push this for power. So we're going to get some iron sights on here. Um, air in the gun, pellets, and we'll see what she can do. Back in a few. Here we go. 
Iron sights first shot. We'll see if we're anywhere near where I expected to be. By the way, um, <laughs> 30 yards with iron sights uh, for precision is probably realistically more than my eyes can do. Um, but we'll do a little group here um, just to see what it looks like. And then, uh, then we'll get back to some more, uh, we'll call it data. I'm basically looking at uh, two perfectly clean uh, splatter burst targets. And, uh, well, let's just take a look. Okay, I decided to throw a camera downrange. So you're going to get to see these as I shoot them. Okay, so I shot, I think, three, and then I adjusted the irons uh, a little bit to bring it to the left, and then I shot five. So let's go take a peek at that. All right, we're walking out to the target. Uh, iron sights at 30 yards, so I'd ask you to... Uh, Temper your expectations on that. These were those first shots. And then... Not too bad. Um, let's do some velocity work. And then uh, let's see what you can do with a scope. Okay, I have refilled the gun to 200 bar, which is the, uh, the recommended maximum fill and um, so we're gonna we're gonna take some shots and we'll see what the chronograph shows us eight sixty five eight sixty three 858, starting to drop a little bit, 847, 854, 849, 847, 842, 840, 835, 
that second mag has about a 30 foot per second spread. So if you're new to this, um, what you'll have to figure out is what's an acceptable velocity, what's an acceptable velocity deviation, meaning what's the spread, and um, what kind of shot count are you looking for. If you can afford, in your mind, to have a bigger spread, you're going to get more shots per fill. If you're saying you want maximum power, I would say your first magazine filling to 200 bar is the way to go. Um, if you're saying I want the most consistent, which is probably going to yield the best accuracy, then I'm going to look at where is that shot string. There's quite a bit of drop off in the first magazine from a 200 bar fill. But you might find if you fill only maybe to 180 bar and then start shooting it down, we'll see in a minute here what this next magazine looks like. You might get 20 or 30 shots, well, maybe 20 shots that are within that, you know, 25, 35 um, foot per second deviation, and that might be good for you. Okay, third mag. So that magazine got us to 759. Um, there were a couple more shots really close to uh, that 800 range, and then it started dropping off again. So I'm going to stop it right here. I think you probably have, with a short barrel 22 caliber rifle, um, if I was looking at a 25 to 30, 35 foot. Uh, spread to keep my accuracy, especially as I go out further, pretty consistent. I would look at trying to get around 800 feet per second. I'd figure out where I need to fill the bottle to in order to, to get into that sweet spot. And then I'd shoot, you know, a little short of two magazines, maybe, maybe really take the time to dial it so I know exactly what I'm working at um, and get that two good magazines out. Let's, uh, Let's gas this back up. I'm going to put a scope on it. Let's see what we can do from an accuracy standpoint with an optic. Okay, we have a target at 30 yards. Got an Element Optics Helix. This is the 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope. And we're going to take a group here. Uh, we'll do a five shot group and see how it turns out. Um, should be should be a little bit better than what I was able to do with the iron sights. That's five shots, that's all one ragged hole.
<laughs> um, yeah, that's 10 dead iguanas, no doubt about it. Um, boy, 30 yards, one ragged hole. Uh, we'll go down and take a look. Well, <laughs> you've already seen him hit. That's, uh, that's all right. I like this gun. All right, here we are at the 30. And uh, those are two five-shot groups there. I like that second one a little bit more than the first one, but uh, nothing to complain about there. I mean, those are all single hole groups. I'll take that every day. Um, unregulated, so it's fairly simple. Um, not a lot to go wrong with it. I'm going to put a little cutaway in here. Um, there's one screw on the cocking handle that needs a little Loctite uh, because it's, uh, it's backing out and it's cutting away or taking away from the smoothness of the cocking action. So I'm going to fix that. But, uh, boy, you put a, a scope like the Helix on there, um, and there's plenty of other scopes that would, that would be just as good. And, and you've got a, a nice little ratting, iguana, squirrel, um, you name it, it's a good setup. You know, you've got the advantage of being able to fold up the stock. I replaced the stock one. Um, I don't need the up and down elevation. I like the Mission First Tactical design, so I uh, popped one of those on here. So you got adjustable length of pull plus the, the compact nature of it. Um, I'm impressed. It's a, it's a great offering, and if, uh, if you've never had an opportunity to check out anything by Nixon, um, uh, I think that's definitely one that would be worth checking out. Uh, if I were going to make some honest criticisms of it, um, I don't like that screw backing out, and like I said, I think a little Loctite will fix that. Um, there's a little bit of, of grittiness to the trigger. Um, I don't have my trigger scale with me, so I can't measure that. Um, it's not a phenomenal trigger. It's not a bad trigger. There just is a really nice, definite break, and then you pull straight through it. Um, but there's just a, a, just a little bit of grittiness in that pull. Um, at this price point, I don't think you can expect a miracle trigger, and this one's certainly good. Um, it's got a foster connection, so you don't have to worry about a fill probe. And, and I don't, filling with a probe isn't so bad. I just lose them, and when you get a couple of different guns that need them, or a couple of different models that use different ones, it's really pretty easy <laughs> to have the wrong one with you at the wrong time, which is, is no good. If you're looking for uh, a pretty lightweight, good shooting air gun, um, I think you could do a lot worse than the Nixon Tacto, um, and those groups are, are, I'm liking those groups. Okay, I have a target at 60 yards, and I'm going to tighten this screw. That's that one that's gonna need a little Loctite. And I'm gonna throw a fresh mag in and we're going to shoot a group at 60 yards. I'm going to make a guess on my uh, elevation here. Um, so that's a guess. I'm going to knock a bunch of stuff over first. And then we'll get set up here. All right. Remember, this is a guess. Okay, not a bad guess.
<laughs> All right, there's a five shot group, which you've just seen. This is 60 yards on an unregulated gun. This is some good shooting, and I think you're going to want one of these. Let's go down and take a look, though. So just to remind you how a box to bench works, I get a gun in a box and I take it to the bench and put air in it and I shoot it. And you've seen all that shooting. Uh, there are a couple of let's get it dialed in kind of shots and some chronograph work, but there's our first two five shot groups at 30 yards. And now we'll take the walk out to 60 yards where the target camera is rolling. And we'll take a look at a 60 yard five shot group. Just remember everybody, unregulated PCP. Um, uh, that, that's, that's got me excited. <laughs> All right, the Nixon Tacto. This one's in 22 caliber. Um, you can pick it up off the pellet shop or Donnie FL websites. Um, my guess is you'll start seeing these pop up at dealers around the U.S. Um, this is a great little gun. I'm having a lot of fun shooting it, and I think you will too. So. Um, this definitely gets added to one of the guns that I can't wait to get out and shoot some iguanas with. So, till the next video everybody, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.